Hi everybody, my name is Derek Powers and I'm a Architectural Associate and Digital Media Manager for Martin Gardner Architecture in Marion, Iowa. Uh, a little bit about me, I uh, grew up just outside of the Twin Cities and uh, went to Iowa State for architecture and graduated in 2014. And uh, since I graduated, I've been with Martin Gardner here in CR and uh, been working there ever since. Uh, just to kind of get things started, I wanted to share uh, a little bit more about my firm and the kind of work that we do. All right, so Martin Gardner Architecture, we're a, uh, a full service architecture firm uh, all the way from pre-design through construction administration. And uh, we're community architects, uh, which means that we really care about the work that we do in our community and the type of impact that we can help uh, bring to the areas around us and the people that live in the communities that we do. Uh, we've got two offices, one in uh, Marion and one up in Strawberry Point. Uh, we have a total of 10 employees, seven of them in the Marion office and two up in Strawberry Point with a, uh, another uh, project manager up in Nashua. And among uh, typical architecture work and building projects, we really like to get involved in uh, other ways in the community. So one example would be uh, these uh, seed balls, which are uh, clay that have different seeds of native plant species like milkweed and that kind of thing. And you can plant them anywhere, and it helps to support monarch habitats in uh, sustainable uh, areas for wildlife. Um, and that's uh, a effort that was done by uh, Michael LeClaire, a, a landscape architect of ours. And uh, that brings me to mention that we have architects, uh, the landscape architect, interior designers, as well as uh, project managers all on our staff. Uh, and it's really fun that we all kind of come from different backgrounds and have different skill sets that uh, just add to um, our abilities at MGA. Um, like I said, we are a full service architecture firm. And so uh, are the five main phases of design being programming, schematic design, design development, construction documents, and construction administration. I'll take you through a little bit of that just to kind of illustrate the project process from the beginning to end. So you can think of programming as identifying the problem. So in this case, we were designing a community center. And uh, so pretty much you just start to kind of lay out what a product needs. So do you need, if it's a gym, do you need exercise facilities, offices, locker rooms, et cetera. So you kind of just lay out the whole problem. And then that brings us to schematic design where we start to refine things a little bit more. And so you start to kind of place rooms a little bit more uh, specifically, start to figure out what um, areas are gonna be next to each other, um, sizes of spaces, uh, specific space layout, and then a little bit more specifics of what uh, will be in the room. If it's uh, locker rooms, what kind of uh, you know, toilet fixtures do you need or showers, that kind of thing. If you have offices, what kind of connections you can need for uh, power and internet and furniture. Another part of schematic design is starting to figure out a little bit more about the aesthetic of the building. Uh, and as you can see too, I mean, we, do, we use computers all the time. And it's um, digital media are some of our most widely used um, tools that we have at our disposal. But still, even today, nothing can really replace uh, drawing by hand and using hand sketch to communicate an idea. And so we do uh, a bunch of that as well. Moving uh, from schematic design into design development, this is where we start to refine things even more. So in schematic design, if we knew that we needed to have windows and doors, then in design development, we start to figure out what those specific materials are and what other kind of building systems that we're gonna need. Uh, this is one of the, the phases where we uh, start to get really involved with other consultants and other uh, professionals, um, which is a really exciting part of the process when we work with uh, engineers or civil engineers, electrical engineers, um, uh, landscape consultants, all different types of, uh, of things. And, um, and so it's really exciting to get to tap into their knowledge and have uh, and learn a lot more from them, which just adds to this entire process of uh, designing a whole project as a team. In construction documents, this is probably the most time intensive part of a typical building project because it requires so much uh, time to document uh, the drawings and the specifications. And then that leads us into construction administration where we help to oversee the intent of the, uh, the project drawings and specifications to help assist uh, contractors and skilled trade people in the actual construction of the building. So here's an example of the uh, community center in Kelowna, which we uh, just finished a couple years ago, which was a really great project to be a part of. 
Um, and it turned out really great. And we were fortunate to have the, the city be great partners. And they even gave us that, that video of the time lapse of construction that you just saw. Um, so it ended up being a, a really great project. And it's fun to, to see an entire project go from a sketch on a piece of paper to hearing basketball games be played on the course. So that's uh, particularly fun uh, for me being a big fan of sports my entire life. So that's a little bit about Martin Gardner. And so let's see. Next I'll talk about just kind of a, a, a typical day at MGA of uh, me working in the office. And so, like I said, I'm an architectural associate as well as the digital media manager. So I do a lot of different uh, drafting and modeling, just uh, like a, a lot of different architects would. And I also do a lot of uh, digital media. So 3D modeling, uh, rendering, and that kind of thing. But uh, so a typical day for me at MGA always begins with coffee. It's uh, a bit of a habit that I've picked up, but it kind of is just a good uh, kickoff to the beginning of the day. Get to socialize with my uh, coworkers a little bit and just kind of ease into the day. From there, I'll uh, talk with my uh, project managers or whoever's the lead of the project that I'm working on that day and just kind of get uh, coordinated and up to speed for what we're going to do uh, that particular day. Um, again, I do a lot of uh, drafting and so drawing on the computer we use programs like uh, Revit mostly and then we do use uh, AutoCAD uh, which has, was uh, widely used for quite some time and still is we use AutoCAD on lots of different types of projects um, then we also do 3d rendering and so we use a lot of programs like um, Lumion and SketchUp are two main ones that we use for that um, another part of a typical day at MGA is that and, and really architecture in general is uh, communication Communication is probably the number one uh, thing that it takes to be an architect because it's absolutely not an individual sport. Architects uh, or architecture is a team sport that you, you really have to work together with so many different people and there's all these different moving parts and pieces that it's, it's really exciting to, to take what you can offer to the entire process and then work with others to, to make the best solution possible. Uh, we also have a lot of fun at MGA. It's kind of like working with, with your family. And so being able to have uh, a good, positive, uh, fun environment to work just makes it that much more uh, enjoyable to be at work. And I can honestly say I haven't had a day at work that feels like work yeah, since I've been there. So I feel pretty fortunate for that. Um, just in general, at a typical day, a lot of what we do is problem solving. I think of uh, a degree in architecture uh, as kind of like a degree in advanced problem solving because uh, it kind of teaches you to think outside the box a lot. Um, let's see, one of the things that I really uh, like about my job is having a flexible kind of work-life balance, so to speak. So like if I've got a doctor's appointment that I need to get to, a, a family engagement, or even just uh, being able to play basketball for a long lunch on Mondays and Fridays at the Y, I really enjoy playing basketball. And so that's really nice because being able to you know, live your life as well and uh, your company knowing that you're going to get your work done and so whether I work a little bit more through lunch or afterwards or just you know any other time and make my time up then it works out uh, pretty well and we always get our work done on time. Uh, let's see what else do I like about my job well it, it, it again it doesn't really feel like work for me and uh, I was fortunate that uh, I knew what I wanted to do since I was 15 and I was uh, able to find a career that really um, uh, kind of spoke from my uh, my interests and uh, passions, and so I feel very fortunate for that. Um, and MGA really encourages us to uh, bring our interests and specialties to the table. So from the first day that I worked there, uh, I knew or I, you know told my uh, boss and my coworkers, well, hey, I really like digital media and 3D modeling. So they kind of empowered me to help lead our uh, process in that. And so we've gone from using like uh, exported still images from SketchUp to doing pretty high-end renderings and even uh, virtual reality through uh, Lumion. So it's really great to be able to kind of take your interests and apply them in a really uh, good positive way that brings value to the company. So speaking of digital media, I wanted to show you a couple programs that we work with. So the first and foremost we use is uh, Revit. And so this is our uh, main uh, drafting program. So what we used to use in AutoCAD, which is pretty much just two-dimensional drafting and every view would have to be drawn by hand. What Revit does is it takes building components and so you can draw like entire walls at 
a given time or insert you know polling fixtures and that kind of thing and so it's um, um, it's a type of program that we were, we would or building information modeling and so all the different uh, um, information that we have about a building is kept in one spot and so it makes it really easy to uh, draft things faster and have a lot more information communicated at once. So then from uh, Revit, we also use SketchUp a lot. And so uh, what SketchUp is, is a, um, a pretty basic entry level 3D modeling program that is widely used across industry and not just in architecture, but in all different kinds of uh, um, design fields. So just to give you an example of how easy it is to use SketchUp, you can really quick just make different iterations of um, you know, building models, but it's not limited to uh, architecture. It can be um, you know, industrial design or product design. And again, it's uh, free and available to uh, the public to use for uh, the basic version. And we use the professional version for uh, projects in our, in our work all the time. And so, what more finished product of a SketchUp model will look like is something like this. So this is a project that we just recently uh, finished and is going to be built this summer. And so it takes a, it can take quite a bit of time to work through a model, but it's really fun. And uh, when I'm talking with students about careers in architecture, I uh, ask, so who likes to play video games? And a lot of kids raise their hand and I do too. And that's a really fun part about architecture is that oftentimes in my job, it's like getting paid to play video games. So then from SketchUp, we then import that model into this program, which is called Lumion. So Lumion is this really great kind of uh, rapid production uh, rendering and modeling program, which allows us to do uh, really nice rendering and fly throughs of a building. Um, and it brings the production quality up pretty significant. Uh, if anybody has ever played The Sims or Sim City, it kind of reminds me uh, a lot of that, which is, uh, is kind of fun. I'll show you what a finished product of a Lumia model would look like. So we take that model and then we just kind of set up some different scenes and then create really cool fly throughs. So we get to pretty much make our own movies of our design. And we like to think that if a picture says a thousand words, just think what some high-end renderings or a video fly-through would do. Uh, again, we're starting to dive into virtual reality a bit more, and so we're using VR headsets to help communicate our ideas even more clearly. So it's really nice to be able to go to a client and give them a headset to put on and just say, hey, check out your design. So that's a little bit about, about some digital media. So for me, uh, it's a little bit uh, more about me and how I got started. Uh, again, I, I grew up in the Twin Cities of Minnesota, and I was really fortunate that I had some drafting classes that I uh, took from the beginning of high school, my freshman year, all the way through my senior year. And uh, you know, that teacher for me was my drafting teacher, who was really inspiring and helped me find uh, uh, or connect my passions into a, a really viable career path. So I took drafting classes all through high school, from um, hand drafting to mechanical drafting. I took uh, AutoCAD classes, Inventor, um, all sorts of things. And I ended up participating in this uh, program called the Minnesota State uh, Tech Challenge. So we would design a, a program and then submit it for review. And it was a really great way to get some kind of early on project experience. Um, and so from there, I knew that I wanted to go to architecture school. and so. I chose Iowa State and uh, I went there. And uh, so Iowa State is the only college in uh, the state of Iowa that offers an architecture program. So I'll just use that as an example. Uh, Hawkeye fans, I apologize. Hopefully in the future they will have an architecture program, but for now you're stuck with us Cyclones if you want to stay in state. Um, so the cool thing about uh, the Iowa State program is that no matter what major in the college of design that you want to go into, you all take the same classes your freshman year. It's called the core program. And so there's a number of classes that you have to take and then you apply at the end of the year. 
So if you uh, are interested in architecture school, then there are a whole bunch of programs all across the country uh, that you can go to. I've actually got a map here that illustrates that. So there's a whole bunch of programs in the Midwest. And uh, so yeah, if you go to this acsa arc website, um, it has a really great list of resources for where uh, some programs are. And then also uh, the nationally accredited architecture board has an entire list of every single accredited architecture program in the country. So if you're interested more in architecture school specifically, then uh, there's lots of available information out there uh, for you. Uh, so the main way to become an architect is kind of this traditional path that I went through of going to college and then graduating and then uh, beginning to take my tests, which I'm still working on for licensure. But there's also alternative ways to become an architect. And, uh, NCARB just released, uh, or who is our um, licensing authority, they uh, just released recently in the last few years an alternative path to certification. So if you have relevant experience in the industry or you have a, a slightly different path and you end up really wanting to become an architect, then there's definitely a path for you uh, to do that as well. So oftentimes, So oftentimes uh, I uh, get asked, what kind of uh, classes should I take? Or, you know, even before college or knowing that I want to do that, then what kind of uh, classes should I be taking? How can I prepare? Uh, and so uh, classes that I would recommend taking would be any kind of art class. Um, I know that I wasn't really a super hands-on and creative kid in high school necessarily. Uh, and I didn't really consider myself an artist. And then once I got to school, or to Iowa State rather, and in my architecture program, uh, then it's, um, or I was taught a lot more about that. And so it, they kind of just take, well, I kind of think of the first couple years of school, they just kind of take some grips and then just pull as hard as they can to try and get you to think outside the box. So if you aren't, uh, you know, the most creative or hands-on artistic person, don't worry, they'll teach you how to be. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in art, drawing, painting, sculpture, anything hands-on creative, I would absolutely recommend that just to get you to think creatively and about problem solving. Um, if you have drafting classes available to you at your high school, I would absolutely recommend that. Um, you know, AutoCAD, Revit, uh, SketchUp, uh, it, uh, let's see, what, Inventor is another great program. Then, um, you know, learning Photoshop or Illustrator, anything like that, any kind of classes like that uh, would be great. Then also, because uh, communication and the ability to work with others is so key. I would really recommend uh, composition, English classes, anything that that helps refine and um, develop your communi communi excuse me, <laughs> of course, communication skills, uh, even more so both verbally and written. Um, I recommend physics. Um, a lot of people think that, oh man, you know, if you're an architect, you must do a ton of math. And we do use math a lot, but, you know, it's, uh, I think at least in the beginning stages, it's really important just to kind of have a, a, a basic understanding of physics and how things work and reactions and that kind of thing. Uh, and then also industrial tech classes. I mean, if you can uh, make things with your hands, then I would really recommend that. Um, let's see, what else? So, uh, what makes a good architect? So a, first and foremost, again, communication. I would, uh, I would talk about communication all day. Um, again, it's not an individual sport and you work with all different types of people and professionals all the time. And so it's important to be able to go to a job site and talk with contractors and talk with people that actually know how to put a, a building physically together with skilled tradespeople, um, talking with engineers and uh, learning a lot more about um, uh, other disciplines that we have other special uh, specialists for, uh, structural engineers, interior designers, and that kind of thing. Uh, and then also to just work with people and clients. And so working with the public is, is a big thing. And so how can you uh, best communicate about a project to a school board or a church congregation, et cetera? Um, and then problem solving is a big thing about what makes a good architect. So um, yeah, really, and like I mentioned before, uh, a degree in architecture is a degree in problem solving. So being able to take a set of issues, come up with a plan to address them and implement them, whether it's figuring out a way to learn the latest and greatest 3D modeling program, or if it's to figure out you know, to put 
500 people in, uh, or to properly seat 500 people in an auditorium. And so it's a, it's a really fun, uh, exciting career if you like to, uh, a challenge of problem solving very often. Um, teamwork is a big thing, again, I've touched on that before. And then just in general, a willingness to learn and um, becoming you know, self-reliant and self-sufficient and understanding that you don't know everything, but if you uh, have a good attitude and you're willing to work hard, then you can learn things really, really fast and that'll help you in your career immensely. Another important thing is to understand that failure is a tool and failure is very important and you'll most likely encounter failure in some form or another along your way towards your career or while you're in your career. And I say, go for it and don't be afraid to fail. Uh, for me, the one of the most, or what was one of the worst days in my career, before my career, that ended up becoming one of the best ones is when I found out after applying my freshman year to Iowa State, uh, or after my first year, that I didn't get into the architecture program right away. Got this pretty stark email that said, hey, thank you for um, submitting, but uh, we do not accept you in the architecture program. Hit me like a ton of bricks, and I was not prepared for that, but it was kind of the, the shock to the system that I needed to, to set me straight and to help me realize right then and there that that is exactly what I really want to do. It's not going to be as easy as I thought. And so it made me really uh, kind of realign and go back that second year, retake some of my classes, get way better grades, have a better uh, portfolio submission, et cetera. And then I got in after my second year. So my point is that that for me could have been the thing that threw me totally off and uh, ended up throwing me a totally awry in my career, but it just became the thing that absolutely made me know for sure that that's what I wanted to do. And so I worked hard, went out and got it. And you certainly can do that too, if that's the case. Um, so yeah, I, would, I wouldn't be afraid of, of failure at all. So what can you do right now? If you're in school and you're wondering, what can I do in Eastern Iowa to kind of participate and um, you know, get more information and some more hands-on examples of um, you know, what I can do for architecture. So first thing that I would recommend is uh, Junior Achievement and ICR Iowa are putting on this great career expo in the fall. And so I just want to talk about this quick. It's Career Inspire. And uh, you're able to, or every freshman in the, high, in the Cedar Rapids area is able to participate. It's going to be uh, this fall. And so that's a great way to learn uh, a ton about, uh, in a hands-on manner, about different careers, not only in architecture, but also all different areas uh, and industry sectors. Um, another uh, opportunity that would be really great would be uh, Build My Future. And uh, if you're in middle school, Build My Future is a hands-on career expo put on by the, uh, the ACE Sector Board, Kirkwood Community College, the Iowa Home Builders Association, and a number of other industry partners. So pretty much it's a career expo that uh, you can go hang drywall and learn about um, all different types of skilled trades and uh, careers in architecture and engineering. Uh, unfortunately, with the, the COVID-19 outbreak, it uh, had to be canceled this year, but we're already really excited about organizing it for next year. So that's something to keep your eyes on. If you're in um, some of the uh, Cedar Rapids high, school, um, high schools, then you could do the Cedar Rapids Student Built House Program. And actually, the picture of this house is my house, the one that I'm sitting in right now. You can see it in this video. Uh, it's a really great program where students are led by professionals to literally build a house, and you get you know, high school credit for it, and it's a real class. Uh, so that's a really exciting thing. If you live in Iowa City, the Iowa City uh, Home Builders Association sponsors a uh, Iowa City Student Build House program. So if you contact the Iowa City HBA, then they will have more information on that. Uh, Iowa Big is a great organization that has uh, hands-on project-based learning uh, where you can really learn a lot about um, actual professions in our area and uh, just get a lot of um, yeah, really exciting project experience of all different kinds of industry. I'd also recommend uh, talking to Workplace Learning Connection. They're an excellent resource for job shadows, internships, etc. And um, I know I host a lot of job shadows at my company through Workplace Learning Connection, and it's a really great opportunity for students to uh, get into actual businesses and see how uh, professionals uh, work in their in their industries. Uh, something that you can do right now from home, uh, if you're interested in learning a lot more about different uh, careers and just high quality educational uh, resources, um, I would recommend OpenCourseWare. So 
pretty, the long and short of open courseware is a lot of, uh, or a number of colleges and universities put a lot of their course information online for free. Uh, the one that I uh, am familiar with most is MIT. They actually put a ton of their uh, classwork online. And so you can actually go and get um, you know, class lectures and notes and examples about different classes. They even have a, a YouTube channel where you can go take classes from MIT on all different types of topics. So that, those are uh, some things that I would recommend. Another thing I would recommend is uh, checking out this explore-ace.org. And so this is a website that was created by the ACE Sector Board, which I'm a member of and have been for a number of years. We're just industry professionals that uh, have gotten together to try and help uh, bolster the workforce pipeline and get students as much information about careers in the ACE industry as possible. So if um, you go to the website, then you can um, connect your personality characteristics via a test, a personality uh, test that every eighth grader in the state of Iowa is required to take. And so if you take your personality of all, any characteristic, whether it's enterprising, social, artistic, realistic, investigative, or conventional, uh, for sake of argument, I'll pick artistic, then that connects you with a whole bunch of different careers in ACE and uh, in architecture as well, of course. And so if you go to this website, then you can check out a lot of different resources that'll give you more information about that. Um, you know, some advice that I wish that I had before uh, getting into architecture or uh, just being in my uh, um, uh, career in general. I mean, I think it would be to have leveraged the resources that were at my uh, disposal a little bit more. So like in high school, you know, pick my teacher's brains even more. And in college, using the, uh, um, the, the 3D printing lab and the laser cutter, uh, again, picking my professor's brains for as much information as possible. And uh, just, just realizing that there's so much information and so many resources out there available to you to help figure out what you wanna do. Uh, and for me, again, I was very fortunate. I knew what I wanted to do since I was 15, but that is often not the case. Um, and so I would also, wish that I'd known um, in retrospect that uh, it's just as important and useful to know what you don't want to do uh, with your career as knowing exactly what you want to do. Um, and so don't be afraid to go, you know, try some things. Go try a, you know, a class that you haven't ever um, you know, tried before or learn a skill that you have before and just try and figure out what matches the best with your personality and what will bring you joy in your, in your career. Uh, if you're lucky like me and you found something that you really feel like going to every day that doesn't feel like work, I mean, I think that that's, uh, that's hugely valuable and makes my life a lot more enjoyable personally as well as professionally. Um, and if things don't go to plan, guess what? You're human and it's, uh, it probably doesn't go exactly to plan for, for most people. And again, that's okay. Um, and uh, again, not knowing what you want to do or not, or knowing exactly what you don't want to do is just as, uh, uh, helpful is knowing exactly what you want to do. Um, so with that, that's kind of a, a brief overview of uh, architecture. And uh, I just want to thank Workplace Learning Connection for giving me a chance to talk about uh, my career as an architect and uh, my company at Martin Gardner Architecture. And uh, wish everyone the best of luck. And um, hopefully everyone has learned a little bit from this and hope to uh, have some more resources for you available soon. Thank you.